Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. If you're new here and you have not joined me on Instagram, make sure you come join me on Instagram at Amanda's Favorites. I have that link down below in the description box also. That's where I check in every day. That's where I do my giveaways from and that's where we can just communicate more and get to know each other better and share as a community. So join us over there. All right, today I'm going to give you um, three different ways to use Erin Condren's Deluxe Monthly Planner. So this year was my first year to get Deluxe Monthly Planners and I have fallen in love with them because they are so versatile and their function just works perfectly for so many different things. So let's talk about this. And I do have a video going more into depth in each way I use these. So I will link those videos down below. Today I'm just going to skim over each way that I use them. And then I will link the videos down below where I have a detailed video on each one of these ways that I use them. So first, let's get into let's get into my spend tracking one. So I'll post this detailed video down below. This one I'm using for spend tracking. It is not for budgeting, okay, as you will see, but I'm using it for tracking my spending. So many people use it for budgeting, like Dave Ramsey style, and that is great. And I am just using it for spend tracking. I am writing big major purchases on these months at the beginning. And then as each month comes up, I am just spend tracking mainly our groceries, but also Amazon and medical for the month. So I have my three main grocery places, which also include lots of stock up things like toilet paper, paper goods at Target. You know, it's beyond food. It's a lot beyond food, but things that you buy there. Anything that I buy at Target, Kroger and Sprouts. Target, we do get food there when I go shopping there, but it's a lot less food. Um, so I do a weekly trip to Sprouts and then usually like two Kroger click list orders a month. And then I try to stick to one big target order a month. But as I've been tracking that in this notebook, I've noticed that hasn't been happening. And that's what this notebook has brought to light for me. So I'm also tracking my Amazon every month. I'm not writing them down here every month. I started that way in January, but in February, when did I stop? I stopped writing them down and I just go on Amazon and add that up every month. But um, every month I'm writing them in the same order. So it's really easy for me to keep track of. Um, we are at April 26th right now, the day I'm recording this video. And so I'm doing really good for April. I mean, I don't add my Amazon up till the end of the month, but so Sprouts, Kroger, Target, and I add up my Amazon and I add up my medical these are other big expense items or just things I want to take note of, like getting our lawnmower maintenance, getting my hair cut. Um, these are usually dates and um, fast food out, my Sonic drinks. And just because I want to keep track of that, what we don't measure, we can't monitor. And so I can't monitor myself if I don't measure it right here. So I have to first keep track of it take measure of it, and then I can begin to monitor it. Okay, so here is like March is completed. Like I said, I'm on April 26th right now. And so at the end of every month, I add up my total for that column. Okay, for my Sprouts, Kroger, Target, Amazon Medical. Then I take that total to the back here. And this is where it gets really fun for me. Well, not fun, but yeah, it is fun. And I'm going to be so excited to look at this at the end of the year. This is my first year to do this. And I see myself keeping up with this. I didn't expect myself to want to keep up with it after this year. I thought I'll just monitor it for one year. But I have so enjoyed it and feel so much more in control. And I feel like I know what's going on. And it just um, brings a measure of peace. To my financial life so I think I will keep monitoring this keep spin tracking for who knows how many years but here I just take like here's my January totals my February totals my March totals and then so for Sprouts Kroger Target Amazon Medical and your family would be different things it's you know whatever you want to monitor in your spending 
And then what I do is I add Sprouts Kroger Target because those are our groceries plus our like hygiene, cleaning, you know, toilet paper, all that stuff is in there. Not just food, but um, I include all that to say groceries. But I add our Sprouts Kroger Target and then I put my total here in blue pen so that I can see like if one month we stocked up a lot, then the next month should go back down because sometimes you know, you stock up on lots of shampoo, medicine, lotion, toilet paper, cleaning supplies, paper goods, that type of thing at Target. And that's obviously going to take me a couple hundred over that month, but then it shouldn't consistently stay that way. That's just a stock up month for me. So that is how I am spend tracking in my Erin Condren uh, Deluxe Monthly. That's one thing you can do with it. And like I said, I have a detailed video linked down below going through this a lot more if you're interested. Another idea for an Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly is daily planning. I know that sounds weird, but um, I do weekly planning in my Erin Condren Vertical Colorful and I don't switch that up. But my daily planning I switch up a lot because I have a lot of planners to work from because of my channel. And so I try out all different kinds of daily planners because I don't plan ahead in my dailies. I don't pre-plan. I just come to that day, you know, and take off my weekly, you know, planner and take off my weekly list and see what I need to do that day. Well, I've always missed having a place for a monthly list and a weekly list in the same planner where I'm doing my daily planning. So I thought to try this out and I have really enjoyed it for several months now. Um, okay, so what I've been using is I am using the five boxes for the month as my monthly list. So these two pages are my monthly list in the deluxe monthly. And so I can divide that up like for April, my to do's, my errands, my online work. Um, that's obviously not all my online work, just things I thought of I needed to do online. Um, my husband's honeydew list, my teenager's list and other random lists to keep track of for the month. So then I have my monthly lists here, and then I can go back to where she just has plain notebook pages back here. These are my daily lists. And if I run out of pages, I can always recoil just using one of her notebooks. Um, I have not recoiled one of her planners before, but um, there's many videos on YouTube, and I'm not afraid to try it. So. I can always do that, but some days I do two days per page, and some days I use an entire page. We'll flip through and I'll show you for like an entire page per day, like that. It just depends on what the day holds. I love Erin Condren's paper. I love the feel of writing on it. I love the crisp white look of it, and I also love the smell of it. So that was another thing that drew me to trying this for my daily. Um, so now my monthly list is in this book with me, and then I make a weekly list every week. So here's one of my weekly lists. I write what week we're in. I write Monday through Saturday, and I write any major timed events here. And yes, I already have my weekly planner, my Erin Condren vertical laying out on my desk. But this is my daily that stays folded over by me all day long. Um, while I work and homeschool all day long. And so this is like my guiding light all day. This is my right hand man. So that's our weekly appointments. Um, all my big appointments also go on my phone, but on my iCal, but I just do not, you know, check that daily. That's mainly for if I need to make appointments while I'm out. So I know what's going on. But and this planner never leaves my house, really. It, it stays at home for me. That's just my lifestyle. Then I have like a weekend list, a to-do list, to call, computer stuff, stuff to do with my son. So every week that weekly list looks different, but my weekly list is one full page for every week. And then I have my dailies right with it. Before I started using this, I was making my monthly and weekly list in another notebook. And then I would just be using whatever daily planner, you know, I'm using at the time, whether it's Emily Lay or if I'm trying out Kit Life or if I'm just writing daily lists in a Lloyd's charm. I've tried all these things, and I actually do have a video about, um, I've done the Inkwell Press daily too. 
I have a video about all the dailies I've tried in the past year. Um, I will try to remember to link that down below too. And I do have a daily um, planner playlist also if you are just looking at daily planners. I have a whole playlist devoted to those. But so this is where my daily planning is right now. And I'm really enjoying it because of her paper um, and just because of having all my lists in one book. And because it's so flexible, it's not a daily planner that's laid out for me. And so let's say my list gets really messy and I just need to start a whole new list for the day. Well, I can do that. I can just flip the page. I can just start a new list down here. I can put two days on a page. Or if I have a really busy day, I don't have to. I could use a whole page, which I've done both. Here's another weekly list. So the week of, and then I have my Monday through Sunday and I have appointments. And then this week, I just like basically had all my to-dos like that. So every week looks different, but I have completely enjoyed using this Erin Condren Monthly Deluxe as a daily planner, but it can also house my monthly list and my weekly list, and I really like that. Of course, you could do the same thing with just an Erin Condren notebook or any notebook. The only thing you would be lacking is you wouldn't get these, you know, good five boxes dividing you here for the month. And I honestly don't use my monthly calendar in here. When I first got it, I thought I might, but I already fill out a monthly calendar. And so I don't need to reiterate that on here. I really don't, I don't need to have that on here. So I decided I wasn't gonna fill that out anymore in here. And so I could do this in just an Erin Condren notebook also. The only thing I would be giving up is giving up like the monthly divided boxes here because you could just do this on any two page spread. You can label it for your month and divide things out. So this can be, this method can pretty much be done in any notebook. But if you were someone who say, didn't keep a weekly planner with like monthlies in it, um, if you were someone who just, you know, had a daily planner and not a weekly planner, this would be great because you would fill out your months in here and use them for your planning. Um, but since I have a weekly planner, I don't do that. I hope that makes some sense, you guys. I do have a full video explaining more about this and how I use it in my daily planning stuff, and I will link that down below in the description box. All right, the last thing which I've been using, now there, of course, are many other amazing uses for Erin Condren Monthly Deluxe. That's what I love about this planner. Um, but these are the three ways that I've been using it. This has become my homeschool planner. I was using a big Erin Condren teacher planner and I found out this year that that was just, this was my first year to try that. It was really overkill for me and I really didn't need it. And before this year, I just kept track of stuff by writing it in a, in a simple notebook. And so I decided to go back to just something more simple because I really didn't need the Erin Condren teacher planner um, for only homeschooling one student, just for my needs. Because we have a whole homeschool checklist chart. Um, and I will link that video down below too. There's a video showing how I use the Erin Condren teacher planner this year and why I transitioned to this. And it also shows the chart we use every week and why I don't need a teacher planner, really. So this is how we use it every month now. What it is, is... Um, if you watch the other video down below, you'll understand. We have our big checklist chart every week that my son works off of, and I don't really need more than that because that in our curriculum keeps track of it for me, but this is a really good recap for every month. I just like having these boxes already here. Once again, I could do this in any notebook for sure. I could just draw in my own dividers. But I love this, and I bought these when they were the 40% off, and so it was a great deal, too, because I thought, I've been wanting to try this, and this is a great time to do it with that price. So I write in any days we're off school that month, because we follow the public school schedule for our district, since my teenager is in public school. And then I write kind of what we did in math that month, so it just sums up what chapter we worked on, basically, in our curriculum. And then I sum up what we did for history that month. I sum up what we did um, read aloud wise that month. I summarize 
what my son's reading on his own that month and then what we did for science that month. And that is pretty much all I need. Here is room for extra notes, but um, I haven't really used that much. We're in April right now. So I did write some extra notes over here in April. And then did I use any notes back here? Um, yeah, I did write some routine stuff. And next year I would keep track of like attendance back here. I already did that in my Erin Condren teacher planner this year. And since I started this notebook, we haven't missed any days. So um, he's rarely sick enough to not be able to do homeschool. So I will keep track of some of those things in here, which I kept track of in the Erin Condren teacher planner. But I just don't need that big, huge teacher planner. And this works perfect for me. Um, the calendar, I do like having it in here because I number what week of school we're on because we go with our school district. So I like knowing what number week of school we're on and I like to see what days we're off school in here and like the end of the fifth, six weeks since we go with our public school, um, periods just cause it's easy since I have a child in public school too. And just noting like any testing that my older son has in school. So this is this has been really a great transition for me from the Erin Condren Teacher Planner, and I talk a lot more about that in the video I will link down below. If you get a monthly deluxe, just FYI, it comes with two sheets of these labeling um, tabs, and then it comes with a folder here and a tiny folder here, and that is your basic monthly deluxe. I will also post down below a full walkthrough of the monthly deluxe. If you want to like look at every single page in it and what it comes with, I will post that down below too. All right, guys, I hope this gave you some good ideas because there are so many other things you can do with the monthly deluxe too. And that's why I love it because it is so versatile. The only change that I really hope they make to it next year is I hope that it comes with tabs, monthly tabs. So you don't have to buy those if you want to add them and spend more money. But I also just like the way permanent tabs look better. But that's really my only gripe about this notebook. I love the Deluxe Monthly, and I'm sure I will be buying um, many more in the years to come for these same, for using them for these same purposes year after year. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Happy planning. Bye-bye.